With power demands rising and concerns over global warming increasing, what the world needs now is an efficient means of producing large amounts of carbon-free energy. And one of the few available options is nuclear, a technology whose time seemed to come and go and may now be coming again. For the first time in decades, new nuclear plants are being built, and not just in Iran and North Korea. With zero greenhouse gas emissions, the U.S. government, public utilities, and even some environmental groups are taking a second look at nuclear power. And one of the first places they're looking to is France, where it's been a resounding success. When much of the world spurned nuclear power 30 years ago, the French, being French, decided to go their own way and embrace it. Paris, the city of light, is lit by nuclear energy, which powers just about everything in France. Its homes, its factories, even its high-speed railroads. Nearly 80% of the country's electricity comes from 58 nuclear power plants crammed into a country the size of Texas. Pierre Gadonex, the head of Electricité de France, the country's national utility, says it all began with the French obsession for energy independence. In France, we are, we are ne nearly no, no coal, we have no oil, so clearly nuclear appeared to be the best way. And 30 years later, it appeared to be a very smart decision. Because nuclear plants emit no greenhouse gases, France has the cleanest air in the industrialized world. And because the price of oil is now around $60 a barrel, it has the lowest electric bills in Europe. In fact, France has so much cheap electricity, it exports it to its European neighbors. French nuclear plants supply power to parts of Germany, Italy, and help light the city of London. It is a very competitive uh, way of producing electricity when oil prices are beyond, I would say, around $40 per barrel. And the rest of the world has taken notice. Nearly a dozen countries, including the United States, are either building or planning to build new nuclear plants. And some of that business will go to Arriva, the French government monopoly that controls every step of its nuclear industry, from uranium mining to plant construction to radioactive waste disposal. Deep in the wine country of Burgundy, in this massive factory, Arriva is building the first European reactors since the Chernobyl disaster. What is happening with your business? It's growing. Yeah. It's growing, definitely growing. Bertrand Durand is executive vice president for manufacturing. Is that where the fuel rods come through? Yes. The... Besides the new reactors it's building for France and Finland, Durand says Arriva is bidding on a project to build four new nuclear reactors in China. How many plants do you think might be built in the next 20 years? A minimum of 20, which is uh, uh, quite a change when you, when you compare it uh, to the past. And some of them will almost certainly be in the United States, which hasn't built a new nuclear plant since the 1970s. With energy prices and global temperatures near the recorded highs and the possibility that greenhouse gases will be regulated, the Bush administration is pushing a nuclear revival. In many respects, the nuclear industry in the United States has disappeared. Clay Sell is the Deputy Secretary of Energy and the administration's point man on nuclear power. With world energy demand expected to rise 50 percent over the next 25 years, he says nuclear is the only practical option for producing large amounts of electricity with no carbon emissions. No serious person can look at the challenge of greenhouse gases and climate change and not come to the conclusion that nuclear power has to play a significant and growing role in meeting that challenge worldwide. How much interest is there right now in, in building new plants? There is a tremendous amount of interest. Uh, two years ago, there was exactly zero plants on the drawing boards here in the United States. Today, there are about 15 companies talking about building over 30 commercial nuclear power reactors. Now, all of those won't get built but we think there's a significant chance that many of them will be built. But so far, no one has signed up to actually build one, an undertaking that requires a huge investment of capital and a certain amount of faith. The purpose of our meeting today is to decide whether to shut down the Indian Point nuclear plants. In the 1980s and 90s, political opposition, 
regulatory delays, cost overruns, and a drop in electricity demand forced utilities to pull the plug on dozens of projects. And the industry has a long memory. And I recall one story, a man who is a CEO today of one of our leading companies, and he described the pain associated with beginning what he thought would be a billion dollar plant in the 1970s and bringing it online as a nine billion dollar plant 20 years later. And he made the point to me that that is not a lesson that will quickly be forgotten in the industry. To try and assuage those concerns, the government is offering utilities financial incentives, risk insurance, and a streamlined regulatory system, which has borrowed a page from the French by pre-approving four basic reactor designs from which the utilities can choose, knocking years off the application process. And some of the new plants could be built on existing sites where the reactors are already licensed and operating. But apart from economics, there is the issue of public acceptance. The Chernobyl disaster, and one barely averted at Three Mile Island when a reactor core suffered a partial meltdown, severely damaged the industry's reputation. 